Call her with your name where you calling from. Hey, this is uh, Metal Slugger from Texas, man. Metal Slugger? Yes, sir. M Metal Slugger from Texas. Talk to me, fam. Um, I'm just wondering why all these people trying to give Canelo credit like that. Obviously, where he failed, you know, Roy Jones defeated, coming all the way from welterweight from 139 in the Olympics. What's the deal with that? Um, I don't understand what you're saying. You're saying you, you, people trying to give him credit. What, what do you mean? I don't understand. You clarify. But well, something that Roy Jones already did and actually succeeded at. So they, so you're saying they're giving him credit for what, though? I'm like, I'll be more specific. For an attempt. But Roy Jones actually succeeded where Canelo failed. Oh, you saying you saying because he went up the um the fight at light heavyweight and lost, they giving him credit for that? Is that what you saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's 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 subjective to the individual. Like those people who want to give Canelo credit uh for going up the light heavyweight and losing to Demetri Bivol, they have a right to do that. Just like those who don't like Canelo Alvarez, who don't want to give him credit for moving up the light heavyweight, they have a right to do that as well. Everybody has a right. If that's what they want, that's if that's what they want to do, brother. That's what they want to do. I, you know, it is what it is. I agree with you, but they're saying it's never been done before, which is not true. And Roy Jones and even James Tony did the same thing and actually got somewhere with it. No, oh, okay. Well, you know, yeah, those, you have you probably have to address that to those people. I'm not the one that's saying that. You know what I mean? And I can't I can't speak for those who feel that way. That Canelo Alvarez. There's some people who feel like that 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 Canelo was Superman. He just couldn't get beat. And they're shocked. They're in disbelief that he lost last night. You know what I mean? So those people... I wouldn't disbelieve. That was this, this is not an upset. No, the guy's the champ, and that's his play division. No, you're right about that. It's, it's not an upset at all. I talked about this on a Friday. We did a show Friday, and I asked, I say, it, would this be an upset if Demetri Bilbao wins? And the reason why I said that, not because I thought it was an up, it would be an upset. The reason why I said that was because the Las Vegas, the betting odds, they had Canelo a minus 500 favorite, which to me was showing total disrespect to Demetri Bivo. You even had true, people true. online who do not follow boxing said that Demetri Bivo was another Euro bomb that Canelo was fighting. That's what they say. Mm -hmm. Now those same people are praising Demetri Bivo. The, same, the guy who they said was a Euro bomb, who they thought that Canelo was going to be um, prior to um, um, him losing last night. They totally flipped yeah. the narrative. They totally flipped the narrative. <laughs> and I knew they was going to do that. Caller, call what's your name? Where you calling from? What's up, Cody? I'm Derek from Florida. Derek from Florida. Talk to me. Yeah, it was just so, so yeah um, I think Canelo for sure that wants to see it, but I think the 175, the monsters up there, I think. I think that's too much. That's why he got tired too. Like I think the weight, I think the weight too got him tired. Mm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I well, think no, he just off saying that once. You, you, you say you think the weight got him tired? Yeah, I think, I think so. My opinion, my opinion. Yeah. You know why? You know, you know I why? Think he was for you, you know huh? why? I, yeah, he was for T, but you know why I don't go with the weight got him tired narrative? I'm gonna tell you why. Yeah. When he moved up to 175 and beat Sergey Kovalev, the people. I'm not saying you. I'm not saying you, mm -hmm. but the people who saying that, yeah, man, what it was, 175 was just a little bit too, too much weight for him. He was too heavy to carry that weight around. That's why he gassed out. Those same people were, were not saying that when he moved up the light heavyweight and beat Sergey Kovalev. Um, he says, oh, I agree. As great as Canelo is, he isn't beating the top five light heavyweights. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, there's nothing wrong with that. There's, not, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you know what I mean? That's no shade on Canelo. I'm just saying like, dude, and there's weight divisions for a reason. There's weight divisions for a reason. Now, there are some uh, that believe that he would win this fight. The end result was he didn't win. We saw that physically. So we know we could put that to rest. There are some that probably feel like, yeah, if he fight Joe Smith Jr., he'll knock Joe Smith Jr. out. Some of those same ones are the ones who probably feel like he'll beat Bibble. They have a right to that. I totally disagree with that. I am of the opinion that any of the top guys in the middleweight division, he won't beat. I mean, in the um, light heavyweight division, he won't beat. They're too big, too strong. And I'm, and, I, and this is how I break it down. Not only are they too big, too strong, strong but this is how I'm going to break it down. Canelo's style is to systematically break you down as the fight goes on. How does he break you down? By landing thunderous body shots. Inching closer to you. Um, good upper body lateral movement. He'll work his jab when he should work his jab. Um, and he likes to throw the bolo punch, the left hook, the left hook uppercut to the uh, to the body. 
or he'll he'll throw he'll throw it like that. He can hit you in the solo place with it. He'll throw it and hit you on the throw, throw the hook to the liver shot. And he like to come up with the uppercut with it. He he throw like three different variations of punches from that position. Bolo to the solo plex, uppercut right up the middle, and he come round with the he'll come round with the with the right hook. With, 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 with the left hook. That's how he like to throw those punches. And he systematically breaks the opponent down, right? The only problem with that is this. In the heavier divisions, when you run up on those top guys, those punches that was hurting middleweights and some super middleweights, they're not going to hurt those light heavyweights. So if they can absorb your punches and you got to take their punches, bigger men punch harder, stronger, and you don't have the, you don't have the lateral footwork and you're going to be telling people to come to the ropes and come to you and punch you and stuff like that. That ain't going to work with those guys. And, and, and I just broke that down from a stylistic standpoint. I told you guys Friday. <laughs> oh, he getting off decent, boy. He getting off decent, boy. I told you guys Friday. I say the dudes who hate Canelo Alvarez, go back and listen to Friday's show. The dudes who hate Canelo Alvarez are diehard Floyd Mayweather loyalists. I told you this. Friday. I have the receipts. We did a show Friday. I said, the dudes who hate Canelo are Floyd Mayweather loyalists. And they subscribe to a certain boxing community. You know, the ones who push those narratives. I told you this Friday. Well, right now they getting off DC. <laughs> and that brother funny. He say, did you see? He say, did you, did you see Canelo? Trash. <laughs> That Russian has something for your ass. I'm like, the same Russian who they said was a Euro ball. <laughs> Not in pro-Russian. <laughs> Not in pro-Russian. <laughs> hey. Not in pro-Russian. <laughs> Oh, then he say Floyd Mayweather, and he brought up Floyd. He, you know, I'm telling, I, I know, I'm telling, I know these guys very well. Carla, what's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, hi, this is uh, Bad Mouth. I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. How you doing? Uh, what's going on? What's what's your name is? Bad Mouth. Bad Mouth. Yes. Okay. Uh, Bad Mouth. Uh, talk to me. So I want to ask: Do you think that you could place any of the blame on last night's loss to the training? effectiveness being that they just suffered a loss from another master boxer in Shakur Stevenson. You don't think that they should have changed anything during training to come into this devil fight? I'm I'm gonna be I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think I don't think they could have um changed anything because you know Canelo is the type of fighter that he is. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And normally what trainers do a good trainer when they train a fighter they would train a fighter to do things that's surrounded around their strengths. And they try to hide mm -hmm. and shield their weaknesses. They don't, you know, if you got a fighter like a Canelo, I mean, you're not going to say, hey, look, we're going to try to turn you into a boxer so you can be Sugar Ray Leonard. That, that, you don't, he don't mm -hmm. have the footwork. You know, he don't have the footwork of a Sugar Ray or the quickness. You know what I mean? Uh, stylistically, it just wouldn't work. So normally a good trainer will look at what you do best, what a fighter does best. He tries to improve upon that and try not to turn the fight into a different fighter. Um, to interject mm -hmm. on that, I, I got an opportunity to interview the great Tommy Brooks, which he trained Pernell mm -hmm. Whitaker and, and uh, Mike Tyson and Holyfield. And he said that, uh, I said, when you go into a fight, how many plans do you normally have? Do you normally have a plan A, B, C, or D? He said, no. Yeah, at least three. He said, I never, we, he said, I never have a plan A, B, C, or D. He said, we have two plans. We have a plan A and we have a plan B. He said, plan A don't work, we go to plan B. And plan B don't work, we go back to plan A and try to tweak it. He said, the reason why you do that is because the worst thing that you can do is confuse your fighter. If you give your fighter mm -hmm. too many instructions before he goes into the ring, he's going to be confused and he's not going to know what to do and he might get hurt and get knocked out. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's anything else that Eddie Reynoso could have did, to be honest with you. Um, it showed that they didn't have another plan. It showed his plan yeah, was to. That's what I meant. Yeah, he, he didn't have a plan, so you know that that's you know that's you, you know I mean I, I I understand exactly what you're saying, sis, but it just you know he is who he is. He is right. who he is. You know, right. I'm just you know. He feel great. He yeah. feel great, but yeah, he lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah he lost, and it, it ain't no excuses. It ain't no, it ain't no excuses. And as you can see, I showed right here. This is the this is the lie that Arlette was on. This is the one I was talking about. Uh, Ken Dimitri Bibble. Pull off the upset. Why is Canelo the betting favorite? I had no idea why he was a betting favorite. 
uh, to be honest with you. Um, I was surprised. I was surprised at the scoring. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I was kind of surprised at the scoring. We did the survey. We heard what the people said. Out of 1,300 people who voted in the poll, 81% of the people said that Dimitri Bivol was not a Euro bomb. So for all those people, uh, again, and, uh, people, uh, people, uh, um, people can do whatever they want to do, say what they want to say. But you can't tell me in one breath, Canelo Alvarez is fighting a Euro bomb. No one ever heard of this guy. No one wanted this fight. He's running from the well. He's running from a welterweight. He's running from a middleweight, and he's running from a super middleweight, right? And he's running from all these other guys. Which, what, whatever, whatever you want to argue, I leave that to you guys. In one breath, and saying that he took the on the, um, the path of least resistance. That's what Tom Brown said. Tom Brown said that Canelo took the path of least resistance. I'm like, bro, that was it. Was so disrespectful to me to Dimitri Bivol. And I and remember Friday. What did I show you guys? Remember Friday? What we talked about? I got the receipt right here. Got the receipt right here. Of course I do. Of course I got the receipt right here. Remember when we talked about the role of a matchmaker? And I told you that the matchmaker works for the promoter. I showed you the definition of what a matchmaker is. The matchmaker works for the promoter. It's the matchmaker's job to match their to match the promoter's fighters up with some really really good entertaining fights, right? Something that the crowd can get behind and spend their money on, but you know, but they want, but but they want to make sure that stylistically that fight would be in their favor for their fighter to win. So the argument that Canelo critics have of Canelo, they feel that Canelo is not fighting the best fighters that can really challenge him. They feel like Canelo is taking the path of least resistance by fighting an undefeated champion in um in uh, Billy Joe Saunders. He fought Adney Yildrum. But Adney Yildrum was a mandatory. He had to fight the guy in order to go for undisputed. He couldn't get around that. So they felt like uh, he picked the easy route by fighting an undefeated uh, super lightweight, super uh, super middleweight champion in Billy Joe Saunders. He had to fight him in order to become undisputed. Sold out Dallas Stadium. Had, what, 74,000 people there, right? And then he had to fight Caleb Plant, the slick black fighter. He was a white fighter until he got adopted by certain, a certain boxer community. Then they made him black. He was a slick black fighter. And then when he lost, then he's back to a white fighter again. I'm not, I'm not making this up. You know, you, those who know, know what I'm talking about. Then when he beat him, he became undisputed. Then he said he's going to move up to light and heavyweight, chase greatness. He's chasing greatness. Only problem is this. I don't know who the matchmaker is. I don't know if it's Eddie Reynoso. I don't know what they saw in Dimitri Bivol. Maybe they saw some of the same things. Oh man, you know he went twelve. He went. He went. He went. Um, uh, twelve rounds in his last six fights. You know what that means? That means he's a, he can go twelve rounds without getting tired. I think Eddie Reynoso then was banking on Canelo walking Bivol down, wearing him down with body shots and punches to the arm and stuff like that. You can't tell me that this guy was a Euro bomb Friday. And then Saturday, now he's your hero. That's 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 all I'm saying, fam. My thing is how how yesterday's Euro bomb is now today's uh, superstar. Like you guys never heard of this guy before. When I say you guys, I'm not talking about you uh, you brothers and sisters in the chat. I'm not saying nobody in the chat. I'm saying the guys who was criticizing this fight, Tom Brown, the promoter of the PBC, uh, PBC fighters had the nerve to say that Canelo took the path of least resistance. He took the easier fight. I'm like, well, what, what's, what's, bro, I, like, I was questioning my boxing knowledge. I'm like, well, damn, is, are they talking about a different b Bivol? Are they talking about a different Bivol? Like, which Bivol are they talking about? The one, the one I know, man, this dude was, was an Olympian. This dude had over, almost 300 amateur fights. This dude, him man. God, he got, he won almost 300 amateur fights. This dude here's a bad boy. He got a hell of a resume in the under light heavyweight division. He used to fight on Sergey Kovalev undercard all the time when he was the when, was, when Kovalev was the crusher. He used to fight under the undercard. So I knew how good this dude was. How was he a minus 500 underdog? Like that wasn't okay. The, the pick Canelo. Okay, I understand. But bro, that was but the, that was just. I didn't understand it. And then, and then the, 
the people who criticize Canelo or hate Canelo, they said that he was fighting a Euro bomb. I said, well, these dudes clearly only watch certain YouTube channels who put certain narratives. And that's why I asked you guys, who was the originator of the term Euro bomb? Remember that show Friday? And I went, I went to writing down some names and you guys gave me some names because I didn't know where that term came from. And let's see. You guys said Fanon. You guys said Champ Side. You guys said the LDBC. You guys say Dante's Boxing Nation. You guys say Aki TV. And you guys say uh, Boxing Ego. And you guys said um, um, the Boxing Voice, Nesta Gibbs. You, this was Friday. I wrote it down. This was Friday. We had, we had, I said, where did this turn come from? And why are they calling, um, why are they calling Dimitri Bivol a Eurobomb? What do they you, I, you Remember I said that. Friday. Got the receipt. Got the receipt. Got the receipt. Got the receipt. That's why I love videos. Because when you say something, it's documented. You can't, you can't backtrack. Okay, Ken Roy yeah, no. called from Lancaster. Talk to me, fam. All right, man. So I noticed I got two questions. If Canelo does take the rematch, right, mm -hmm. what can he do in order to win his rematch with Bivol? He need a knockout. Like, what can he change? Up? What, 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 um, what's the word? I forgot the word. What adjustment can he make in order to beat Bivol or even get like a split decision or edge it out somehow? Um, the only thing he could probably do different is, is try to work his jab more. He, he only threw, he only landed 10 jabs. He got to try to work his jab more, stop loading up on shots, stop becoming predictable. Um, uh, stop. Uh, he got to, and he got to work on his gas tank. Another reason why Canelo got tired was because he was loading up on his shots. He was loading up on his shots. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So well, he my gotta, he, is, go ahead. Oh, my, my fault. My fault. But I was just, um, I was looking at the way he fought and I was looking at the way Oscar Valdez fought and how they, they shied away from their jabs. Do you think it has anything to do with Eddie Reynoso in any way, shape, or form, or do you think, like, what do you, what do you think is going on with that? Um, you know, well, well it, it showed the weakness of Eddie Reynoso. Eddie Reynoso is not able to have his fighters make adjustments. So yeah, it, it has it has a lot to do with Eddie Reynoso because if it was any other trainer who and his fighters suffered back to back losses two weeks in a row or something like that, and you see the exact same pattern: the lack of throwing the jab, loading up on shots, being predictable, not not knowing how to cut the ring off. And then when you do cut the ring off, you see what I'm saying? Um, your office, uh, your office of output is 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 pretty much neutered at that point. And you're not using the jab to work your way to get on the inside. Trying to fight, you know, I saw Canelo trying to fight Dimitri Bivol the way he fought you know, uh, Caleb Plant. If Caleb, uh, and that's what he tried to do, and it just simply didn't work. Of course. It, it simply didn't work with Bivol because he's a bigger fighter. He can take your punches, and he knows how to counter off of your counters. So every time Canelo threw, threw, threw those left hooks or that right hook to the arm, he immediately fired back with a three, four punch combination, and he landed at least three or four of those punches every time. Canelo was caught totally off guard that. with the counters. He countered the counter punch. Okay, okay. I think, um, you know, I'm a fan of, I'm not going to lie to you, man. I was a, a big fan of Canelo. I'm a boxer myself. And I use the high guard. You know, the high guard is very effective, but I like to switch my uh, – Style between Canelo and Lomachenko. I just like the high guard style with the footwork on top of it. But you know what I'm saying? It yes, is sir. what it is. You know, uh, Canelo, he took that hell, man. But I think he needed it though. Like I think boxing needed it at the end of the day because it gives people like Bivol, who people were saying was unknown before the fight. Well, not people, casuals were saying were unknown before the fight. It gives a lot of those people like it exposes them to a bigger audience. And um, I don't know. It's just it just um, it makes things more spicy. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Like, Absolutely. I totally I totally agree. I totally agree. By Bavall winning last night, um, either way it goes was gonna be great. If Canelo would have won, they would you know they would have said how great he is, yada yada yada. By Bavall winning last night, he showed that his level city shit. And he's a guy that didn't nobody know. Guess what? Everybody know who he is now. Come on, I'm out of here, bro. Let's go. Come on.